USC is stuck with Lincoln Riley. This is a 10-year contract, over $100 million. The buyout's north of $80 million. You're stuck with him. It's a complete and utter mess. The buyout isn't the only reason you're stuck with him. If Lincoln Riley goes to his athletic director at the end of the year, Jen Cohen, and does a performance assessment, you know what he will be able to say? We beat LSU. Look at how good the Tigers are. The Tigers are the second half of this particular segment because they were really impressive. And as always, I'm not going to do a switcheroo here with uh, LSU. That's a good football team with a quarterback that I really, really like, but I'll get to that in just a moment. So USC is just in a complete and total free fall. And more than anything else, USC somehow has just forgotten how to win football games. This is not year one or two. This is year three for Lincoln Riley. The culture of winning that he had established in Norman, Oklahoma, should should be well established in Los Angeles by now. It is not. But at the end of the year, if I'm Lincoln Riley making a pitch to Jen Cohen as to why this season didn't go as planned or why next year will be better, it's, well, we brought in a new defensive coordinator this year, and it's year one, and we feel like we've made strides. And guess what? They have strides. They have not reached the finish line. They have run a significant chunk of the marathon on defense but they still have a ways to go because improved scheme has to be matched by great personnel. When you watch USC's defense, do you see a lot of great personnel? You see a couple impact transfers, guys like Kamari Ramsey or Achille Arnold at the safety position, both a couple of transfers that they brought in. But you have to build a roster through high school recruiting. You you have to primarily, not entirely, but primarily have your two deep filled out with blue chip prospects at every position. And USC doesn't have the right horses. They might even have blue chip guys that were that were rated as such when they came out of high school. But when you watch that USC defense, do you see a lot of big time impact guys? I see a defense that is much better from a year ago. They tackle better, they scheme better, they don't have blown assignments. Danton Lynn, the defense coordinator, is what I thought. He's an improvement. But here's the other thing that has to worry you if you're a USC fan. In the last two games, losses to Maryland and Penn State at home, in which you had a 14-point lead in both, You have seen the two things you thought you could rely on, that you could count on for USC, falter. Your head coach and your offense. Because who else do you assign blame to when you blow a 14-point lead? Got to look at the head coach first. And that's where USC fans are looking. That's where they should be looking. But the two things that you know, well, Lincoln Riley's won a lot of football games. He's been in close games before and won a lot of them. Well, Lincoln Riley coordinates the offense, so you know that's going to be good. They have not been good situationally. You can attribute that to Miller Moss's first year as a starter. He does not look like the same guy from early in the season. He he does not show the same sort of moxie that a different first-year starter, Garrett Nussmeyer, has shown in, in the last few weeks on several occasions. But USC's offense is not as good as Trojan fans should expect it to be. The defense, I think, is right about where it should be, but isn't quite ready. So the offense has taken a step back, and the defense has taken a step forward, but the regression on offense right now is outweighing the improvement on defense. So this is going to be given more time. You don't have to like Lincoln Riley. You can think he should be fired. I don't think USC is going to fire him. It's year one a new conference. They're learning how these road trips work. It can be a lot of, of things to deal with as a football team when you go on the road, particularly to places you haven't been before. Can you get guys in the right mindset when you have to you know, switch hotels at the last minute? I, I don't think that's happened, at least not that I have heard. But when you go to new places, you go on longer trips, there's an impact. This is not something that is media crafted. This, this sort of stuff has an impact and USC is not adapting well to it right now. And the, pen, you know, the Michigan loss, All right, that one stings because Michigan threw for 32 yards, won the football game. But all right, it was on the road. Michigan's, you know, really good in the trenches and whatnot. All right, we can we can forgive that. Minnesota, Maryland, and you missed the upset potential against Penn State. It's all unacceptable. 
It's all completely unacceptable. But USC is stuck with Lincoln Riley. First year of a new defensive coordinator, third year of a 10-year contract. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. So Trojan fans will just have to deal with it. And LSU fans are perfectly content at the moment to sit with Brian Kelly, who I think is a good football coach. Always have. And I thought LSU would lose this game against Arkansas. So USC, that's an outright lose feeling if you are a Trojan fan because you should feel terrible that you went all the way across the country to Maryland just to lose. And LSU, give me an outright win here because they have proven once again that they are an SEC title contender. Yet to lose a conference game, mind you. They lost to that USC team in week one. Remember the parallels between these teams? Replacing Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks, third-year head coaches who signed big contracts that came from high-profile schools, new defensive staffs because they were a complete and utter disaster. Those defensive staff changes, bringing Blake Baker over from Missouri, yeah, paying dividends there in Baton Rouge. They go on the road, give up 10 points to an Arkansas offense that has been really good this season. <sighs> Boy, I was impressed with LSU. I, I was really impressed that they went on the road and win this game. And as I've said all year, I'm not a guy that does a big, big switcheroo and says, ah, oh, well, maybe this team isn't that good. No, I think Arkansas is a pretty solid football team. I, I picked them to upset LSU for a reason. This game was a point spread of under a field goal for a reason. And LSU goes in and wins 34 to 10? 34 to 10? If that defense is going to play at that level, and Caden Durham can run the ball to the tune of just under five yards of carry and three touchdowns and score on second down and goal from like the 20 yard line or whatever it was. And you have Garrett Nussmeyer, quarterback. I think LSU's offense plays complimentary football very well, but if their defense makes it a well-rounded effort, everybody better watch out in the SEC. So LSU's upcoming schedule, they've got this team known as Texas A&M on the road this week. It's gonna be fantastic at Kyle Field. Texas A&M playing good football, got more of a challenge than some people might have thought against Mississippi State last week. Bulldogs feel like they're on the verge of pulling an upset uh, at some point the rest of this season. But, you know, if UCLA can win a game, why not Mississippi State? LSU at Texas A&M. There's no game I'm more interested in watching in college football this week. Certainly not in the SEC. They've got Alabama the following week. They still have to play Vanderbilt. But I think LSU is going to be a favorite to win most of their games coming down the stretch. Even if they lose this game against Texas A&M, they could still play in the SEC championship game because they've got Alabama at home. They go at Florida, who's playing much better football. They host Vanderbilt. They'll be okay. They host Oklahoma. The Sooners are not any good, and they're not ready to play in the SEC just yet. They could be one day. They're certainly not right now. This is an LSU team that everyone should be worried about, that everyone should be aware of what they're capable of. Because on any given day, they feel like they could win with defense, they could win with offense. They could lean on the run game, they could lean on the pass game. Avoid a disaster on special teams, and this is a will, really well-rounded unit for Brian Kelly and company. And I like Garrett Nussmeyer. I like Garrett Nussmeyer a lot. I'm a Seahawks fan. Got a nice win against the Falcons over the weekend. Not so sure I don't want them to take Garrett Nussmeyer at this point if he's available. I, the more I watch the guy, the more I think, gosh, he looks like he's making NFL reads, NFL throws, and he's just got that it factor. LSU, very much for real. And at the start of the season, they lose to USC. And remember, USC's in the ascension mode, and LSU's on the decline. Brian Kelly's just got the boys playing hard, playing well, playing focused and unbeaten in SEC play. We'll see if that continues this week.